Hello, programmers. My name is Dan McElroy, and I want a JavaFX application to process sales for my computer shop. This presentation covers the JavaFX border pane, HBox, VBox, and grid panes. Several controls are placed on the form, including labels, buttons, text fields, and a text array. Also covered are the JavaFX font, an array of objects, and the try-throw-catch construct. The project definition states, Dan's Computer Shop provides both sales and service. Build a JavaFX application that inputs quantities for each item, except only whole numbers from 0 to 999 as inputs. Use a text array to display a receipt for each item purchased and the subtotal tax and total. Labor is not taxable. Provide buttons for total, clear, and exit. All of the code for this project is located at program-info.net slash java slash computer shop and oh, watch the capitalization. You might want to print out a copy of the code as you go along and view the video. If you're using YouTube to view the video, I recommend setting the quality to high definition because there's a lot of detail in many of the pictures. Take a closed look at the form. There is a title at the top, a list of items and services on the left, an area for a receipt of items sold at the right, and buttons on the bottom. Here is a sample of a customer's purchase. One desktop computer, a notebook computer, two monitors, and a keyboard. Also, one hour of on-site service and five hours of web design. When the total button is clicked, the receipt is displayed. It shows which items are taxable, a subtotal, tax, and total. The clear button clears everything, and the exit button closes the program. Each item has a text field for entering a quantity and an item description and its price. There are several ways to lay out the form. One way is to specify exact XY locations for each control, this can get very frustrating to try to get everything to line up the way you want. Another option is to use one of Java's layout panes. A good starting place is the border layout pane. It has a space for top, bottom, left, center, and right positions. To make more complex layouts, each position can have another pane or controlled place within it. A container can hold multiple things. Since each position of a border layout can only hold one thing, it is common to place a container like an H-box, V-box, or grid in one of the border layout positions. A label is placed in the border pane top position and is used for the form's title. A grid layout holds a list of items or services available on each row. The columns of the grid hold a text field for the customer to enter the quantity and two labels for the item ID and price. After the grid layout is created, it is placed in the border pane's left position. The border pane's center position is not used in the computer shop project. A text control can hold multiple lines of text. It is placed in the border pane right position to hold the customer's receipt. The three buttons are placed in an H-box, which is then placed in the border pane bottom position. The class is used to define an object for each item or service. The constructor is called by the new operator each time an object is created for the list. Each object has four private data members. Text field quantity to get input from the user. Label item ID, name of the item to be displayed. Double price, price of the item, boolean taxable, set true if the item is taxable. The constructor receives arguments for item ID, price, and taxable each time an object is instantiated. The item's private data members are initialized by the constructor from the arguments passed to the constructor. The quantity data member is cleared by setting it to an empty string. Getters and setters are made available for each of the private member data. Since taxable is of type boolean, its getter method is named isTaxable instead of getTaxable. 
The main part of the program creates an array named item list from class item and uses the new operator to instantiate each item. The taxable parameter is set to either true or false. It is not currently being displayed in the list of items, although this could be easily done. A text field is used for the user to input the quantity for each item. A text array control is used for the customer's receipt because it can hold multiple lines of text. The computer shop program starts by instantiating the object named root as a border pane. The next four lines are used to set the top, left, bottom, and right positions of the border pane. The main program has methods named title, sales services, buttons, and receipt that have code to fill in each of the positions for the border pane. The lines for set style, set padding, and set margin help make the display look nice. And lastly, the scene is instantiated, which is actually used to show everything. Shop name is defined as a constant at the top of the program and currently is set to the string Dan's Computer Shop. If you update the program, you can change it to show your name instead of mine. This example shows the creation of a border pane that is named Root. The next line shows how to place something into the right position of the border pane using root.setWrite, whatever method. A control such as the label or button can be placed in a border pane's right position or any other position. More complex panes can also be placed in any one of the border panes position. A Java method can also be called to place items in one of the border pane positions as long as the return data type is something that the border pane can accept. In this example, the method receipt is called, which instantiates a text area, updates the text area, and then the return statement sends the text area back to be used by root set right. The buttons method is used to instantiate an H box and three buttons, total, clear, and exit, and provide links to their event handlers. The spacing and sizes are set to help make the display look good. The buttons are placed in the H box, and the H box is returned as a parameter to root.setBottom buttons, which then places the buttons in the border pane's bottom position. The tile and grid layout panes are similar in many ways in that they both place things in rows and columns. The computer shop project is using the grid layout to select a cell's XY address when placing a text field and two labels on each row. The code shows the first two lines of a for loop that is used to add a text field to column 0 and a label to column 1. The only way that we can tell it is a text field and a label is by looking at the getter methods in class item. Get quantity returns a text field and get item ID returns a label. Here is all of the code for the sales services method that is added into the border pane left position. A V box named V box is instantiated as well as a grid pane named grid. Sizes for the grid and column 1 are set using the hGap, vGap, set perf width, and get column constraints methods. The for loop is used to step through each row, adding quantity in column 0 and item ID in column 1. Those are fairly easy since they don't need any extra formatting when they arrive from the get quantity and get item ID methods provided by the getters part of class item. Adding the price to the grid is a little bit more complicated. A label control is created and named LBL price. The courier new font is used for the price to help make all of the prices line up. The courier new font is monospaced, meaning that each character is exactly the same width as opposed to the Arial font, which is proportional spaced. When displaying alphanumeric characters using a proportional spaced font, the letter I and the number 1 may not be as wide as the letter W or the number 2. Java uses the setText method to add a string to a label. 
but the price is saved in an item object as double numeric data type. The double data needs to be converted into a string before set text can be used to set it into label and then onto the grid. The string.format method works like system.out.printf method, except instead of sending something to the output console, it is placed in a string. String dot format open parentheses quote percent six point two f quote comma item list sub row dot get price creates a formatted string. The percent six point two f is a replaceable parameter which receives the price as a double data type and formats it to be a field six position wides with two places past the decimal. Item list sub row dot get price. Get price from the item selected by row. LBL price dot set text places the string created by string dot format into the text property of LBL price. The for loop adds data into columns 0, 1, and 2 for each item in item list. When the for loop ends, the grid is added into the box. The sales services method returns a VBOX data type back so that it can be placed into the left position of the border pane. The customer's receipt has many lines of text. Using the text array is a good choice to display multiple lines. The lines of text are added to the receipt when the total button is clicked and cleared when the clear button is clicked. The font type is set to Korea new to make everything line up when the text is displayed. The receipt method returns receipt, which is a text area data type backed so that it can be placed into the right position of the border pane. An H box is used to hold the three buttons. After H box is instantiated, the spacing, height, and alignment are set to make them look good on the screen. A button control is used to instantiate each button and the text is included as part of each button's constructor. The set perf size method sets the preferred size the same for each button so that they will look the same. Event handlers are set for a mouse click using the set on action method and event handlers are set for keyboard inputs using the set on key pressed method. These events will cause the program to call the compute total, clear, or system exit, depending on which button was activated. Each of these buttons are added to the H box. The buttons method returns an H box data type back so that it can be placed into the bottom position of the border pane. Note the way the program is currently coded. Any key will cause these set on key pressed event handlers to be activated. Even pressing the tab key while clear or exit buttons have focus will activate their event handlers. See the last slide for a possible enhancement to the program. The event handler for the exit button just activates the system.exit sub zero method, which ends the program. The event handler for the clear button calls the clear method, which uses a for loop to step through each item in item list to set the quantity to an empty string. When the loop ends, the receipt.clear method is used to clear the receipt text array. The event handler for the total button is a bit more complicated. The compute total method is called when the total button is clicked. The first thing that happens is the variables are declared for subtotal, taxable total, tax, and total. A for loop is used to go through each item that is for sale. Inside the loop, compute the bill for each item, add it to the subtotal, and to the receipt. The for loop ends when all items have been processed. Compute the tax and total. Display the receipt in the text array. Expand the flowchart to show more detail of what happens inside the for loop for each possible item or service. The quantity entered is read from the text field and verified that it is between 0 and 999. 
The price for each item is read from the item list array. Compute the value for quantity times price and add it to the subtotal. Determine if the item or service is taxable by looking in the item list array. A separate variable is used to keep track of, of a subtotal for taxable items and the receipt is formatted slightly different for taxable and non-taxable items. Append the receipt to the text array. A try-throw-catch is used to process unexpected inputs from the user and as part of the input validation. Without the try-throw-catch, the program has a major problem if anything except an integer is entered as a quantity in any of the text field boxes. The integer.valueOf string variable method fails if the string passed to it can't be converted into an integer. Here is the code for the compute total method. The declarations for the variables are fairly straightforward. The subtotal, taxable total need to be initialized to zero. The computed value for each item selected needs to be added into these variables during the loop. The tax and total are computed after all the inputs have been processed and don't need to be initialized. The string variable item receipt is also used inside the for loop. All of the executable code for the compute total is placed within a try block to process unexpected inputs from the user and as part of the input validation. A title, thank you for shopping at Dan's computer shop, is placed at the top of the receipt using string.format. The percent %s inside the format string is replaced with a string defined at the top of the program by shop name. The for loop moves through each item in the item list array, one row at a time. The first thing that happens in the loop is to see if a quantity has been entered in the currently selected text field. Only attempt to process an item if the text field is not an empty string identified by two quote marks next to each other. Remember that the text field is initialized to an empty string when the item was instantiated and placed into item list. Here is the if statement. If not item list sub row dot get quantity open close parentheses dot get text open close parentheses dot equals double quote. The exclamation mark means not in C, C, Java, and several other programming languages. Item list sub row selects the item for the current row as determined by the for loop. Get quantity open close parentheses method for the item class returns a reference to the text field used by the selected item. Get text is a text field method that returns a string of text. Equals is used to compare if the contents of the two strings are the same. We need to remember that in Java, the double equal comparison operator for strings checks to see if the references for two strings point to the same location in memory. It does not compare the contents of the two strings. Only do the rest of the code in the for loop if the string in the text field is not empty. Because we know that the string is not empty at this point, use the integer.valueOf method to attempt to convert the contents of the string to an integer. This is the point where a failure will occur if anything except an integer is placed in the text field. Since it is inside the try block, execution of the code will immediately jump to one of the catch blocks preventing the program from crashing. The program can also test to validate that the input is from 0 to 999 and throw an exception if the value is out of range. Get the price for the selected item in item list. The getPrice method is one of the getters for class item. Now we can compute the quantity times price and place it in the quantity x price variable and use the plus equal operator to add it into the subtotal variable. Here is the point at which we need to determine if the item is taxable or not. This is easily done by looking at the 
is taxable getter for the selected item. For taxable items, the quantity times price is added onto the taxable total variable using the plus equal operator. The receipt displays the quantity times price for the item, the letter T, the quantity purchased, the name of the item, the at symbol, the price of an individual item, and the word each. The display on the receipt is slightly different for non-taxable items. The quantity times price is displayed for the service, but no letter T. This is followed by a description of the service, the quantity, the word at, the price for a single unit, and the letters slash HR to represent per hour. The item receipt string variable was declared at the top of the compute total method. It is used to hold one line of the receipt that will be built for either the taxable or non-taxable items. This line is appended onto the text array named receipt. The format string for the taxable items is quote, percent %9.2F T percent D space percent S space at space percent point two F each backslash N. The percent %9.2F is the replaceable parameter for quantity times price and the letter T is displayed. The percent %D is a replaceable parameter for the integer quantity using two character positions for the display. Percent %S is the replaceable parameter for the name of the item followed by the at symbol. The percent point two F is the replaceable parameter for the unit price followed by the word each and a new line backslash in. The format string for non-taxable items is percent nine point two F percent S percent D hours at percent S slash HR backslash in. The percent nine point two F is the replaceable parameter for quantity times price. Percent %s is the replaceable parameter for the name of the item. Percent %d is the replaceable parameter for the integer quantity using two character positions for the display, followed by the words hours at. Percent %.2f is the replaceable parameter for the unit price, followed by the letters slash r backslash n, including the new line backslash n. After the item receipt has been built inside the if-else block, it is appended onto the end of the receipt text array while still in the for loop that processes each item. Receipt.text Receipt.getText plus item receipt is the code that appends item receipt to the end of the receipt text array using its setText method. It is important to see how the item receipt is appended. The first thing to do in the setText method is to get all of the text that is already in the text field using receipt.getText, and then use the plus operator to append the line for the currently selected item. After all the items have been processed by the for loop, it ends. The tax can be computed on taxable items, and the total can be computed as the subtotal plus tax. Now that all the items have been processed in the for loop and the tax and total have been computed, it is time to display subtotal tax and total as part of the receipt. A dashed line is displayed before the subtotal and tax using the dash character. A double dashed line is displayed before the total using the equal character. Finally, we get to the catch blocks, which are used to display an error message if bad data was entered as a quantity in the text fields. We have reached the end of the program. Here are some possible future enhancements to the Compute Shop program. Although it is fairly easy to modify the list of items for sale by making changes in the item list array, only a programmer should do it. Then the program needs to be recompiled and redistributed to the people who are using it. It would be much better to load the list of items from a disk file that can be updated by a non-programmer. 
I recommend that the list of items be placed in a spreadsheet, such as Microsoft Excel, which would be saved as a .csv file. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values. Instead of using a predefined array for item list to implement this enhancement, the program would need to 1. Read the CSV file from the disk. 2. Ignore the comment lines in the file. This example is using star star to identify a comment line. 3. Parse each line using some string manipulation methods into separate fields for the item ID, price, and taxable. 4. Use item count as a variable to count the number of items from the file. 5. Instantiate an item object and dynamically store them in the item list. Another enhancement would be to provide a unique numeric identifier and date for each receipt and possibly even a customer's name. Even better, have a disk file that collects every receipt in one long file for future reference. Even more enhancements. Put a menu bar at the top of the program to select the various options for normal operations, displaying searching the receipt file, displaying a help page on how to use the program, and displaying an about page that lists the current program's revision, revision date, and the programmer's name or company. The way the program is currently coded, any key will cause the on key pressed event handlers to be activated. For example, the tab key can be used to cycle through each text field and buttons, giving input focus to each control that can take user inputs. Once the input focus has been switched to the total button, pressing tab again will cause the total to be computed and displayed. It is not necessary to press the enter key. Any key will do, including the tab key. After tabbing to the clear button, tabbing again will actually activate the clear event handler. Tabbing once more to the exit button and the program will be terminated. The get code method can be used inside the event handler method to examine which key was pressed before computing the total, clearing the inputs, or exiting the program. You can research online how to be more selective on which specific key would cause a specific action to occur. Be careful on adding enhancements. A never-ending list of enhancements means the program never gets finished. Well, I'm finished. Bye-bye.